just remember what your old past said. Boy, you got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. What a great song. But it's also the way that most social engineering scams begin. Welcome to Social Engineering and Romance Scams. I'm Robin Saunders, and I'm the Director of the Graduate Communications and Information Management Programs at Bay Path University, and I also teach at Norwich University in the Cybersecurity Department. Many of you already know me, and you know that cybersecurity is my passion, and keeping baby boomers and seniors safe in cyberspace is my mission. I have two websites, CyberSafeSenior.com and DearRobin.com, that will help to provide you with information to keep you safe in cyberspace. The internet can be a great place to socialize. You can shop, you can do your banking, but in the age of spam and scammers sharing personal information with online friends can also lead to hacked passwords and drain your bank accounts. Here's what you need to do to keep private information safe while socializing online. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about social engineering. Social engineering is the act of tricking someone into divulging information or taking an action that leads to stealing important information or money from them. Now, social engineers aren't necessarily very technical people, but they are very crafty and clever in the way that they think. Remember the movie, The Sting? Well, if you haven't seen it, it's a movie that th where the heroes are actually confidence men, and they're working on what they call the long con in order to scam a known mobster out of half a million dollars. They go through an elaborate setup using some basic information they already know about the mobster while setting up multiple instances of chance meetings and antics to gain more trust and information so that they can gain the mark's confidence. That's pretty much what social engineering is. It's a confidence game. Let's watch this. What is social engineering? Have you ever received a suspicious email with a garbled subject line? Or ever held the door open for an unverified solicitor? These are just some everyday situations where social engineering and its tactics play a larger part in seeking out information otherwise not available to them. There are many ways an attacker can socially engineer a victim, such as phishing emails or pretexting. Many of us have fallen victim to clicking on a suspicious link or attachment only to have an instance of malware or spyware downloaded into our systems. Phone calls are another growing problem, with scammers posing as IT personnel or using other false pretenses to elicit private info, giving an attacker full access to your information. This is often referred to as human hacking, where an attacker relies on coercion and clever research versus hacking machines. Social engineering is an interaction that's designed to steal your data. And it could be physical, like someone standing close to you and shoulder surfing while you're entering a password. It could be personal, like finding out where you live or what you like from your social media accounts, or even going through your trash to find out your bank account numbers and looking at your credit card statements. There are many different ways that a social engineering attack could take place. It could begin innocently with polite chit chat and social interactions um, that you have on your phone. And in this case, I might be having a conversation with someone who could be claiming to take a survey, but might have some ulterior motives. It can also begin with a phishing email. And most of you know what phishing is, so I won't take a lot of time to explain it. And online communities like Facebook can cause you to give up innocent bits of information, but in reality, you're handing over the keys to the kingdom for the hacker. In most cases, successful social engineering scams unlock the doors to your money, your privacy, and your secrets. And oh, how much fun are those silly Facebook quizzes? If you have a Facebook account, then you've seen these many times. They pop up on your Facebook feed or are shared with you from some of your friends. 
They're fun, but also risky. Many of these are designed to steal your personal information. And there's a privacy issue, a scam issue, and a security issue. Let's begin with the simplest. Most Facebook quizzes require access to the details in your Facebook profile. And many times your profile or posts include your religion, your relationship status, your political affiliation, some photos of your family and friends, groups that you're a part of, your hometown, your family, your email address, and even events that you've attended or plan to attend and more. Now, many of these quizzes actually do more than just cluttering up your Facebook feed. They contain viruses that can damage your computer. Others are phishing scams that attempt to steal real sensitive personal information. Sometimes the application itself is actually malicious. And the banner ads that appear alongside the ad could lead to unwanted email or even worse, when you click on it, you could be opening up malware or a virus. So how safe is your data now? You might think that you're answering silly fun questions, but the reality is that you're giving the scammers free information about you that they will use to convince you that you are their perfect match or their best friend. A security researcher found that a popular quiz app on Facebook called Name Tests had a security flaw that let anyone pull up information on more than 120 million people, even after the app was deleted. Yikes, this allowed hackers and marketing firms to easily gather information that might make you think that they know you very well and know exactly what you like. Now, if you've ever tried to find out what Disney princess you were on Facebook, did you think you might be giving away more than your name? In this case, you're giving up your name and your date of birth, and I'm sure you didn't think that that's what you were doing. Maybe taking that quiz was really not worth it. Unfortunately, this design flaw in the name test program was not fixed for over a year, so it was that long that people had access to your data. Anyone on the internet or on a phone can be a target of social engineering scammers, but baby boomers and seniors are more at risk for two reasons. First, that we tend to have more money than our younger people, and the second is that as we age, we tend to trust more, and it's sometimes harder for us to spot the scams before it's too late. It's easy to get comfortable online and forget that it's still a very public place, one where your words and your pictures and your sentiments can be easily captured for posterity and shared with strangers forever. Now remember, each time you put anything on the internet, you're creating your own history. Cybersecurity is a complex field and keeping cyber safe is important, but we humans are the weakest link in the cybersecurity chain. I want you to meet Kevin Mintnick. He's a really smart guy, but looks can be deceiving. He knows all the ways your privacy could be violated through your phone, computer, and tablet. Kevin is a convicted hacker and spent five years in prison for computer-related crime. Did you know that he began his life of crime at the age of 12? My first social engineering, which I didn't even know what social engineering was, uh, was when I was 12 years old. I was riding in the in an RTD bus, which is rapid transit district bus in Los Angeles to school. And how the buses worked in those days is you'd pay a fare, I think it was 25 cents. And then you could buy what they call a transfer for an extra 10 cents. And it was a piece of paper that gave you the privilege just to show the bus driver on the next bus and you wouldn't have to pay a fare. So remember as a kid, I'm sitting on the bus and I'm looking at this transfer, I go, that's interesting because I'm learning how the system is, they punch the date, month, day, they punch the direction you're going, they punch the bus line number that issued it. And it's not like a, 
like a whole paper punch that you'd buy at Staples. It's like different weird shape. And I, and I go, wow, if I can get that punch and I can get those blank transfers, I could ride the bus system for free. Wouldn't that be cool? My first objective was trying to find out where you get the punch that these bus drivers use. So as I was getting off to go to school, mind you, I'm in elementary school. As I'm getting off the bus, I ask the uh, bus driver, they say, hey, listen, I'm working on this project in school. We take these cardboards and we make all these really cool shapes. And I noticed when you gave me that piece of paper, it had really cool shapes. Where do you guys buy those things? Maybe I can get my mom to buy me one so I can do the shapes on the cardboard. And the guy goes, oh, we buy it at the store. And he gave me the address, actually. So I take the bus to this store in downtown LA. I buy this punch for 50. The, the guy behind the counter goes, what are you gonna, what's that for? Because bus drivers buy these. I go, oh, no, it's for my dad. He works for the RTD. It's a, a Christmas present because it was around December. But, so then I have this punch. So then I'm thinking as a kid, I can't buy blank transfers. But I was thinking, these bus drivers must be lazy after a hard day of driving this bus. They probably don't even clean the bus. They probably drive this into the depot. Some guy sweeps it and throws everything into the trash and ends up in a dumpster. So I thought, what if I can go to the dumpster and find these? You know, is that possible? So I ride my bicycle over to the dumpster at a local RTD depot. You know, it's not on the inside where I have to trespass. It's on the outside where to come get the dumpster. I open it up, and I, there you go. look in there and it's jackpot. And I go, wow, and I get in the trash can and there's like tons of, you know, half used books of these blank transfers. So I started punching my own transfers to ride the RTD bus system for free. I didn't even know what I was doing was wrong, that it was fraud. And I'd be so open about it that I'd be at a bus stop with other people and I'd say, oh, you know, you don't have to pay. I can punch you a transfer. You know, you know 12 years old, right? But I'd be punching people transfers in some cases. Most people didn't take it because they knew what I was doing was wrong. And it got to be where I wasn't even hiding it. And I made friends with a lot of the bus drivers and they would just give me the blank books of transfers, knowing what I was doing. And nobody ever told me it was wrong. So that's kind of my first hack. Unfortunately, people are very trusting and don't often know that they're being scammed. Now, the good news is that Kevin works for us and this is his interesting motto. Remember, it's so easy to get comfortable online that you forget it is still a public place very, very public. So if someone you really don't know pretends to be your friend and is asking you for private information, beware. Don't let the hackers fool you with their tricks. Now that we've talked about social engineering, we need to mention romance scams. Let me scams are the perfect example of a social engineering on steroids. Now many of you know this wonderful song. It's sung by the famous Patti Page. The days of meeting that special someone out on the streets has been replaced with online dating sites. Millions of people are looking for love, but many are left heartbroken and broke. Everyone wants to find the perfect love and baby boomers and seniors are a very romantic group. Yes, we are. Because of divorce, separation, or death, nearly 20 million of us over 65 or older are single. Now, intimacy and companionship are an important part of life, but online dating can be very dangerous. This is technically called the sweetheart scam, and it's one of the most widely used scams used to steal your money. This can be very tricky because the scammers can prey on you online, they can prey on you on the telephone, or any of your other digital devices. 
In this case, the scammer will convince you that they are madly in love with you and that you're the one and only for them. They prey on seniors and baby boomers who are often lonely and want attention. Who doesn't? This is all brilliantly orchestrated and no one is immune from this scam. Both men and women are equally victimized and the scammers are hard to identify because they're usually conducting business outside the United States. But according to the Federal Trade Commission, people are reporting losing over $143 million to romance scams last year. And unfortunately, this is higher than, it's just a higher total than any other type of scam. Now, it can be exciting to sign up for an online dating service for the first time, and there are an awful lot to choose from. And after you sign up, then you begin to build a great profile, one that is designed to attract your perfect match. Next, you'll pour over all the exciting matches and maybe even start to talk online with some of the more promising ones. This is how all of the dating apps begin. But remember, it can also begin on Facebook. And on Facebook, it usually likes, looks like a friend request from someone that you don't already know. Remember, many baby boomers and seniors do find love online, but dating scams have become a real problem. You don't wanna be left with a broken heart and an empty bank account. So be senior smart. It's very easy to create a fake online account, and these are the ones that are designed to dupe you. There are even applications and softwares that will help people do this. Scammers copy photos from other social media users to create an attractive profile, and they even steal the identity of a real person. Romance scammers are tricky and hard at work wooing you on dating sites and other social media platforms. Just like real romance, it may take a time, it may take a while for them to trust you and for you to gain their trust, but they don't mind waiting because the payoff can be big. And last year, people reported a median loss of 2,600 for romance scams and some much, much higher than that. Now, romance scams are a form of catfishing. And these wolves in sheep clothing can be very convincing. Remember, it is their job. And they are really good in impersonation and research. And catfishing is a numbers game. If a catfish creates a fake romantic profile hoping to entice 50 people, just one bite is all the catfish needs to orchestrate their scam and to steal your money. Never forget, that all of the personal information that you put on your social media profile, things like pictures of your friends, pictures of your grandchildren, places you've traveled, restaurants that you've eaten at, and even things that you eat are there forever. And they give these scammers all kinds of information about you. Scammers do their research and they're really, really good. They comb the internet for additional information about you. Now Google yourself and see what appears. I bet that you will see more than you expected. They even check obituary pages to see if you're a widow or a widower. They're perfect target and they conduct their research before they plan their attack. Now here are some clues that your romance is being hijacked by a catfisher. Bad grammar and spelling in the messages, despite claiming they're from your country, is a big red flag. Because remember, most of these scammers are from places where English is not their first language. Next, the person asks you for money, and this should be a big red flag. The conversation becomes quickly romantic. Remember, to the scammer, time is money, so they want to get you on board as quickly as possible. Next is the person claims to have an illness or is struggling in some way. They prey on your empathy because as seniors and baby boomers, we're really nice people. 
Next, they don't speak on the phone or webcam chat, and that's because that you'd be able to see and hear them, and they're definitely not the person in the pictures that they have provided to you. Now, if this romantic attachment started by Facebook, one of the things that you'll see is that they have very few or no friends on Facebook, and that's because They've developed these profiles very, very quickly, and they don't have a chance to get any friends except for you. Next and last, they claim that they do not have a permanent address as they're working or traveling overseas. That is also a very big red flag. Let's look at a real life example. Alan, the FBI calls it the confidence scam or the romance scam, saying it consistently ranks in the top three for online schemes, preying on people who are looking for companionship and love. But before you know it, you've lost your life savings. How could you do this to somebody? I mean, seriously. I Laura Bacchus says she was forced to put her Aurora home up for sale. The annuity's gone. The annuity's gone. Your credit's gone. My credit's gone. And you have to sell your house. And I have to sell my house. Bacchus was tricked into sending dozens of cash payments totaling $250,000 to a person who she thought would be a partner for life. He was gonna move here in this house and then we were going to buy a house in Florida. She met Richard on an online dating site. Shortly after, she says they ditched the dating platform interface and exchanged numbers and email. Every time I see your picture, I fall in love with you all over again a table full of romantic love letters. If I had a flower for every time I thought of you, I would have a whole garden forever. It wasn't long before requests for money started. Six weeks worth of buildup to where we were, I thought, really close. And for him to ask for, it started out small amounts, you know, like 2000 or $3,000. The largest one was like 50000 Bacchus says those wire transfers eventually racked up to $250,000, all sent from her various bank accounts, lines of credit, even gift cards. But Bacchus says the scammer's story was convincing. What's now believed to be a fake picture with Richard holding a check for $1.3 million, and this fake bank statement showing his account had a million bucks in it. He made me beneficiary to some account that he had. Bacchus believed that money would soon all be theirs to share once Richard could get to the U.S. to access the funds. They gain your confidence and ultimately they start with little things, little requests, a little bit of money here, a favor there. Before you know it, you're so invested in this scam that you're giving them more and more things. The FBI Chicago field office says most victims send at least $100,000. A lot of people feel that they can't put the brakes on because then um, all of the things that they've done so far are for nothing. The Federal Trade Commission ranked romance scams as number one when it comes to total losses. 21,000 reports from people claiming they lost a total of 143 million. Even though many are overseas, the FBI says it can sometimes track down scammers with help from its regional computer forensics laboratory. However, you have to immediately report online crimes to ic3.gov. Victims of this scam do have some hope. You never know which case is going to be the one where you're going to get all of the money back. I called the phone numbers Bacchus had for Richard. I will contact you as soon as possible. And he didn't answer. Oh, it's ruined my life. I have no retirement left. Bacchus says she reported the thief to police and the FBI after she broke the life-changing news to her family. I'm glad they're there for you. Yeah. Bacchus never heard back from Richard after her money was gone. So what are the red flags? Research pictures. You can run reverse image searches to see if the same pictures are being used online. Ask people if they are willing to video chat or meet in a safe place. And if they want money, cut off the conversation. Bacchus recently sold her home. We are told she is going to be living in Florida now at a family friend's condo for now. But We all want to find true love, but no one wants to lose their life savings or their home. Here are some tips to avoid becoming a victim. First, be careful what you post and make public online. 
Scammers will use these details on social media and dating sites to better understand, better convince you that they're your perfect match and better target you. Research the person's photo and profile that, by using some online searches to see if the image or the person's name or any sort of details have been used anywhere else. Now, I love Google image search because it's a great place to start as many of the scammers will use photos that they steal from other people and you'll find out there. Go slowly and ask lots of questions. We're smart, we're a smart generation. We don't wanna be duped. Beware if the person seems to be too perfect or if they ask you quickly to leave the dating service or your social media site to be able to communicate with them directly. Also beware if the individual attempts to isolate you from your friends and family or requests any inappropriate photos or your financial information that could later be used to extort you. And beware if the person promises to meet you in person, but then somehow always comes up with an excuse why he or she can't. Now, if you haven't met the person after a few months for whatever reason, you have a very good reason to be suspicious. And never, ever, ever send money to anyone that you've only communicated with online or by phone. Never, ever, ever. Online dating sites can be fun, and it is possible to meet someone you love, your perfect match, but you need to be careful. And remember, anyone can be scammed by a supposed sweetheart, and don't be ashamed. Although getting defrauded is embarrassing, understand that these are seasoned scammers that have learned how to be very convincing so they can make a good living from deceiving people. And it's very important for you to report the scam. In the United States, if you or someone has fallen victim to a scam, a romance scam, report it as soon as possible to the local law enforcement or the FBI's crime complaint unit. That's iscsquared.gov. Now in Canada, it's a bit more complicated. The RCMP and CAFC advise you to immediately stop any and all conversation or communication with the scammer. Contact your financial institution to put a halt on any payments and report the fraud to your local police. Then they ask you to call 1-888-495-8501 and contact the Anti-Fraud Center. Go and find love. We all need it. We are a very romantic group. But as always, be cyber smart. And most of us will also be senior smart. And thank you for listening. Well, I hope you've gotten some good information from that. I'm going to move my mic so you can hear me. Um, Romance scams are, are something that can be so devastating to the individual because as a senior and as a baby boomer, you feel like you've been duped and you feel like your extra special sense did something wrong, but that's not the case. These fraudsters are very, very tricky. Just about anybody can be duped. I was out to, out to dinner with a girlfriend um, who happened to show me some texts that she'd, re she'd received from somebody she'd met on a dating site. And he was asking her to send him a, a gift card, a gift card just for a little two, $200. I said, before you do anything, there's one thing that I want you to do. I want you to take his picture and I want you to put it in Google reverse image search. And you can easily find that online. She dropped the picture in the search bar and lo and behold, he had many different profiles up there and he'd scammed an awful lot of people. So be very suspect if somebody exhibits any of those things I've told you about in terms of the romance scams.